Wow, Bridge Church, we are so excited for you. Pastor Jen and Rick, it's amazing to see all that you guys have been experiencing. Happy birthday, Bridge Church. Happy birthday. It is so cool to hear about what God has been doing through your church and through your community. Baptisms, seeing people come to Christ, making a difference in the community. It has been so cool to see God do His work through Bridge Church. Yes, and we're excited to see what more God will do as you continue to walk in faithfulness to Him. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hey, y'all. Right. Mm, I think I need to take care of something or we're going to have a conundrum here. Is it time for cupcakes yet? No, Chris. You have to see. This is why. Yep. Yeah. No, after service, Chris. After service. So if you... That's good. Thank you. Um, so for you who don't know, there is this incredible, amazing friend and woman of God that many of us know and have known for years named Kathy Gray. And the reality is she makes some of the best cupcakes on the planet. And she wanted to celebrate with us today. So that's why Chris is so excited about cupcakes, because we get excited about Michelle's cupcakes. Don't tell Michelle's, but Kathy's are even better. They're so good. All right. So, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Happy birthday, y'all. We're so excited that you can join us. We value each and every person that's here. Some of y'all saw a few of us like jump up and get super excited. Please don't feel not loved. Somebody just got back from three years in Germany and she walked into service like she was going to come in incognito and that's why a couple of us just jumped up and lost our minds. So anyway, so um, we want to talk about what God has done. We want to praise him and we want to celebrate what he's done. We want to recognize where we have some needs, right? And we want to talk about where we're going. But if we're going to do any of that, then we really have to talk about where we started. So I don't know if you know that there were about 20 of us that started on the launch team. If you were part of the original team for Bridge Church, would you just take a minute and stand up, please? Yes, Melody, I know you had just left for Germany, but you were online with us. Come on, stand up. Pastor Rick in the back. We value and appreciate y'all. That's right. Give them a hand. All right, you guys. They're like, can we sit down now? Yes, yes, you can. So. <laughs> so we want to talk about where we started, right? Because when Pastor Rick and I were first called to plant a church, God was very clear that we were to plant it right here. Now, we were sitting in clarity at the time. We did not know he literally meant right here, but he did, which is awesome. And as he did that, he opened our eyes and he introduced us to this town of Indian Head that really, even though we had lived in the community, lived in Waldorf, lived in the area for like 19 years, 18 years, hadn't, like most people outside of Indian Head, been here. And he introduced us to a community that, that honestly felt neglected and abandoned by a lot of people. We spent about a year walking, talking, meeting in clarity with different people, meeting with the mayor, meeting with different families that have been in the community a long time and listening. We did prayer walks and we looked and, and, and we watched and we listened. God opened our eyes to see a part of this western part of the county that often felt less than. They felt left out. They had less resources and lower incomes. They were a little embittered by unfulfilled promises, state funding, county funding, that would just suddenly get revoked and taken away. There were unintentional hurts that caused big rifts in the community, caused when the base had to put a fence around and enclose and secure the base after 9-11. And followed by threats of a base closure, that left many distrustful and bitter. As we walked the streets together in those prayer teams, we could see that there were people who were enslaved in chains of poverty and addiction, disparity and hopelessness. We saw anger and division that caused a rift between races 
between the haves and the have-nots, between the military and civilian communities. We spent a year walking and talking and listening to people who felt forgotten and unseen and unheard and, quite frankly, unknown. But we looked through God's lens, and we saw things a little different. We saw potential and restoration and revitalization. Where others saw Indian Head as a dead end, Literally, the end of the road, that's what we kept hearing. We saw it as a strategic beginning. And we asked God, sitting in clarity, quite frankly, in some prayer time, what is the message? Like, I know it's the gospel message. That's every church's message. But what is the message? And God so clearly spoke into my spirit, Hagar. And I want to invite you to turn to Genesis 16, verses 6 to 13, just to really ground us in where we began. You see, Hagar was not an Israelite. She was a foreign slave. So the God of Abraham wasn't her, well, Abram at the time, wasn't her God. And yet... I'm going to pick up in verse 6. Then Sarai ministered to Hagar, or I'm sorry, mistreated Hagar. So she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was a spring that stood beside the road to Shur, and he said, Hagar, slave of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? Did you hear that? God saw the foreigner. He knew her by name. He called her by name, and he asked her, where are you? Where have you come from? Where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai answered. The angel of the Lord told her, go back and submit. And added, I will increase your descendants so much they will be too numerous to count. He goes on to tell her about the child she will have, the name he will give her. And he said, for the Lord has heard of your misery. And she gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me, she said. I have now seen the one who sees me. God spoke very clearly in that moment. This community thinks that I don't see them anymore, and your message is to tell them that they are seen and they are known and they are loved by me, and that's what you are supposed to do. Beyond that, I want to tell you he invited us to be a part of what he was doing in this community. And I think that's really important because a lot of times we can come in as the new business or the new church or the new person at work and just want to take it all over and think we're the cat's meow and it's all about us. And God was like, (laughs) I'm doing something and you get to be a part of it. Because there was a faithful remnant here serving. The folks at St. James, oh my gosh, did they love this community and serve them consistently and faithfully. There are families here. There's the auxiliary and the volunteer fire department. God had been raising up leaders for years, many of whom were here before we were here, before we even had ever spent a day in Indian Head. Shane Blanford, she is an outstanding principal. She could go anywhere in this county or, quite frankly, anywhere to be a principal. She is amazing. But she chooses to be at Indian Head Elementary School because she sees these families and she loves these kids. She invests in them and she pours out to them in unimaginable ways. Do you know that the announcements every day, the morning announcements, end with, and remember, Miss Blanford loves you. Every day those kids get that message. There's Mark and Marilyn Steele, and we think of them because of Clarity Coffee Shop, which is like our second location It's our off-site, it's our, you know, whatever, satellite location. It's not even off-site, it's the after. It is the Bridge Church after party. Let's just all be honest. If you have ever been in Clarity at 1130 on a Sunday, we'll move to give you a seat if you're not part of us. We will. We'll be nice and everything. But it's not just a coffee shop. They've purchased apartments and townhouses, and they've fixed them up, and they've made them livable spaces, and they've offered them at affordable rents so that people who earn a living wage can have a decent place to live. By the way, Justin's a part of that team now. Thank you for the work that you do, Justin, to bring revitalization to this community. And of course, now there is their relentless pursuit of a grocery store to bring Food to a food desert that has been a food desert for 20 plus years. 
And not even because he's sitting in the room, but because it's true, there's Mayor Brandon Pollan, the youngest mayor ever elected in the state of Maryland and well on his way to being the most accomplished mayor in any city, no matter how big or how small. Because where others saw a dying town, Brandon saw a hope and a future. Where others saw devastated, ripped out, washed out buildings that were boarding up, Brandon saw what could be. He saw new businesses and DOD and educational partnerships. He saw centers for community and recreation. He saw programs for children and youth. He saw repaired relationships with the military and civilian populations. So yeah, God asked us to be a part of what he was doing in bringing Indian Head back to life and a life that would not just survive because they've been doing that, but a life that would thrive. Now, I got to tell you, as a church, that can be a little tricky because you get into, well, our mission is the gospel, but you're showing us all these needs outside the doors of the church. And so what are we supposed to do? And that takes us to Jeremiah 29, 4 through 7, which is one of the first passages he gave to us. Actually, I want you guys to read this with me. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. God says, seek the prosperity of the city where I have carried you into exile. Seek the prosperity of the non, well, not Christian at that time, the non-Jewish city where I have placed you. See, God said, Indian Head should be better because I'm putting you there. You shouldn't just care about growing a church. You should care about growing a community together with them. Indian Head should be a better place because we are in it. And when you add to that the new covenant promise of Jesus, who made a practice of seeing and knowing and loving every person he encountered, inviting them into a life-giving, life-transforming relationship with him to freedom, then you get our mission statement at Bridge Church. You guys know it? They're like, oh, man. It's on the big green painting out there. I know we talk about it. Actually, many of you do recite it. Not recite it, but like talk parts of it all the time. More importantly, you live it. But let's read it together. Connect, oh, well, you got to have it. Connecting our neighbors and the needs of our community to the unconditional, empowering love of God through Jesus Christ. Connecting the community to God, unconditionally loving them. That's a tall order. We sat back, this little, this little launch team sat back and thought, well, how do we do that? How do we develop as a brand new church with just this little tag, ragtag band? Can I call us a ragtag band? I hope nobody's insulted. A ragtag band of believers. How do we do that? Oh, by the way, COVID just happened. I want you to build relationships and minister to a community where you have to stay six feet apart, wear a mask, and not gather in groups of more than 30. 25, what was the rule? I don't even remember. It's, it's prayerfully buried deep. <laughs> and we established some values. And I'm not going to read them all, but if we could put that value slide up. We said if we were going to do what God called us to do, we had to value all people, all people, not just people that looked like us, made what we made as a paycheck, went to school where we all people. Relationships, committed to walking in authentic love for God and others. We had to value community. This was the big one. I'm actually going to read every single word. <laughs> the opportunity to be present and active representation of God's love in Indian Head. We're committed to meeting our neighbors where they are and creating opportunities and spaces of common ground for the community to come together. Now, this is a website picture. So these are the three top things that everybody sees when they visit the page from the outside. 
We know none of that can happen without the foundation. We've got to value God's word. We've got to value the Holy Spirit. And we've got to value freedom and equality in Christ. Because if our position in Christ doesn't come before our position in our political party, we won't make it as a church through this next election, or we wouldn't have made it through the last one. If our position in Christ doesn't come before our position at, at our job, then the enlisted person and the officer aren't going to be in a small group together and work very well. If, if our position in Christ doesn't come before our position on any difficult platform, masks, no masks, vaccines, no vaccines, immigrants, no immigrants, you name it, God has called us individually to be an active representation of him in each and every space he sends us to, and those spaces will look very different. And as long as he is the number one, then we still come into this room and build that relationship and celebrate that relationship, and we have a, a healthy Christian community of Republicans and Democrats, of white people and black people, of wealthier people and, and more blue-collar people. We have it all, and we are thriving together because we put Jesus first. Yeah. Amen, church? Yeah. Amen. That's a whole lot to start with. It was a pretty tall order three years ago. We had all that opening day. <laughs> we had all that months before opening. So how did it turn out? How did it go? What are we actually celebrating today? If those are our values, what has God done to work with us and enable us to accomplish them? Meeting the community where they are, we've been at two community Easter events, three Fourth of July events. I don't know, eight, 10,000 bottles of cold water we've given out. I'm not sure. I know it's very hot on the Fourth of July, and we give out a lot of very free cold water. We added sunscreen and bug spray and a cooling comfort station and a place to hang out to that. And of course, our very own Gina Nairn is, close your ears, just the town favorite for the national anthem, I'm just saying. <laughs> We've been a part of two community Christmas events, three trunk or treat events. You know what? Those trunk or treat, I was an anti trunk or treat girl. I really was. I was the whole harvest festival. But trunk or, trunk or treating was outlawed, and the kids needed something. I'm like, y'all, we got to show up. And you showed up. At all three trunk or treat events, we have been at least 70% of the vehicles there. When the church was 35 people, we were still 70% of the vehicles there. 300 and some kids came through that night. 500 kids came through last year. And each one of them, yes, got candy. And we have a rule at Bridge Church, just like good cupcakes, only good cupcakes, good candy, and only good candy. We don't give away yucky candy, right? But in that, they also each got a message in every single candy bag that they value, they're valued and they matter, that they're important and they're special, that God loves them and God sees them. We've also partnered with the Military Alliance Council in the town of Indian Head to support the Seabrook Marines and sailors as they come back from supporting one of the big deals in our nation, the State of the Union Address. Those three to 400 people come back from Capitol Hill and they come here at, what do we serve dinner at, y'all? 1, 1 1.30 in the morning, like, Something like that, we're all a little bleary-eyed, but we're honoring and recognizing and serve those who serve and protect and defend us. We have met Indian Head Elementary School. We've sponsored eight first-year teachers in their classrooms. We've supported all the teachers with classroom supplies, books, personal teacher supplies, all the things. We've given them gift cards so they can go get a coffee because y'all... I don't know about your kids, but I know every teacher who dealt with my kids deserved a very special frappe. I'm just saying. Oh, sorry, you're here. Love you. But it's true. You know it's true. Caleb's like, nope, if I had a teacher here, I'm buying your coffee. He is. I'm telling you. Thanks to Mayor Pollen helping us out with the pie challenge, we even supplied water coming out of COVID, bottled water for kids who couldn't bring it themselves because, you know, no water fountains. You know, they needed extra water. We did that. We've provided snacks during full days of testing so kids had a break and could unplug to plug back in so they could do better on their tests. And we have partnered encouraging local businesses to work with them 
so that at the end of the year, every single employee of the elementary school will get some little gift card of some kind. We have active members of the board for the Indian Head Grocers Council and the Judy Center and Community Center schools. For our community, we have actually sponsored and hosted, so we haven't just met them where they're at, but that goal of creating safe spaces for our community to come to, safe spaces of common ground. Where can we agree? Let's create a safe space there. We've had two community movie nights. One of them was so outrageously successful that there were so many children on this floor and every seat taken that it was like trying to tiptoe through, I don't even know what, tulips, worse than tulips. But there were children everywhere. This place was busting at the seams for a free movie night. We've given free childbirth and education workshops. We hosted Touch of Christmas Wonder where we had seven different events and activities for families to go through in the town because there's not much to do. There's getting to be more to do every day, but there wasn't much to do two years ago. An exciting adventure? Huh. Y'all, exciting adventure? I mean, come on. God showed up in every which way. Total God story. Three amazing, amazing key volunteers. Karen is laid up with a torn ACL. Amy Lee is here. Gina is here. They made that thing happen like nobody's business. And because we listened when God said, be a part of, we didn't try to do it all on our own, and we experienced incredible partnerships with outdoor lip, with all these people. I'll talk about partnerships in a minute. Then our, I think probably one of the events were no, I can't say most proud of because I'm amazed at what God has done at all of them. But just a few weeks ago, we hosted Beating the Back to School Blues where we had 53 parents invest a weeknight and two and a half hours into coming and getting pro tips on how to help their kids have a successful start to a school year because it's not about handing people Band-Aids. It's about offering them solutions to transform and change lives. And in that partnership's with the Board of Education. Former and Superintendent Kim Hill was there as a facilitator for us. Military Alliance Council of Charles County surprised us with a check that covered all the cost, which was amazing. University of Maryland Staff Ed, Vex Robotics Team, Lucky Duckies participated, the Judy Center, New Life Church, Town of Indian Head. Y'all, Town of Indian Head invested. By the way, Mayor Pollan and his beautiful bride were a little busy getting married you were a little busy getting married in Hawaii that week. Yeah. We get to celebrate because in the last three years on the mission field, right here in home in Indian Head, I've already mentioned all the investments in Indian Head Elementary School. We've made multiple donations to Oasis Fresh Food Market as they raise funds in a public-private partnership to bring a food source, a fresh food source to what has been a food desert for 20 plus years here. We've held the first of the many childbirth and care workshops. We've offered support to the Indian Head Volunteer Fire Department. Locally in the area, we've supported Poema Movement, which is a house for women who are coming out of brokenness into freedom, providing them with essential services that they need to, to receive resources and time, support, so that they can find the physical, mental, and economic freedom they need to actually walk into freedom. The Catherine Foundation, and of course, our little sister church of Art Church, who launched 16 months after us. Y'all, you have been busy, nationally and internationally. A thousand churches, which is a network of multipliers committed to saturating the world with gospel center churches. As we find the balance between local mission that is very service-oriented and we're still here to spread the gospel everywhere, we invest in a 1,000 churches as they invested in us. We sponsored new distance learning location at, with Impacto Ministries for their seminary down in Guatemala, and we supported some missionaries in Haiti. But it's not just about out there. If we're honest, and that's what we'll talk about in a minute, a lot of it, most of it's been about out there. 
But in our own Bridge family, we've seen three first-time salvations. We've had nine people get baptized at three baptism services. We've had dozens of hurt and broken saints who said they would never walk back to a church, never walk back into a church family, sit in this room and participate in our Bridge Builders groups and walk in healthy Christian community or back in church again, y'all. That is a praise report because that's restoration. We've had more than 60 people participate in our Bridge Builders groups. We've had two complete courses of Financial Peace University, which is a game changer for helping people get out of the indebtedness pandemic that is our nation today. Many of you have read your Bible more than ever, and parts of your Bible you never thought you would ever read, like, I don't know, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, yeah, in our Bridge Builders reading plan, which keeps us on a reading plan together over years so that we're not shoving God's word down as fast as we can to check a box, but we're actually sitting with the word each day as we walk through together. We've had 11 couples strengthened in marriage through our, um, through our Bridge Builders couples group, and we have had countless people, this is the one you guys probably don't know much about, say goodbye to cigarettes, nicotine, pornography, food addictions, alcohol addictions, other addictions, and others walking it out. And what's really cool, y'all, we started with Sundays at Black Box, and then we got to go to Sundays at Black Box with 450 square feet that used to be the thrift store for offices and kids during the week. And then God was like, oh, no, let me do you one better. Now we have Sunday to Tuesday at Black Box, and we have 1,800 square feet up there that is vital classroom space, children's ministry space, and office space. And we get to celebrate what God has done to advance his kingdom through vital partnerships within our community. We could not do it without God and without us using our listening ears. I've been upstairs with the kids. Using our listening ears to recognize we are just a part and we can't do it all on our own. It is all about partnerships. Clarity Coffee House, Oasis Fresh Foods, the elementary school, the Judy Center. Y'all, we have had two events where the Board of Education has willingly desired to partner with a church to host events in this community. That's a big deal. With Seaber, with Outdoor Living Company, and a very deep partnership with the town of Indian Head itself so that together we can create safe spaces of common ground. Because I don't know if, you, I know you know this, but they need to know this. Have, have you heard? Y'all, you're seen, known, and loved by God. And that's why we have to have those safe spaces. And as your pastor, one of your pastors Pastor Rick is up there celebrating with me. He is tracking all the technology today. Give him a shout out. Up there with Jeremiah. We get to celebrate that we're not just saying it. Y'all are doing it. You are doing that thing. You are doing it. And I want to tell you, it hasn't gone unnoticed. Mayor Paulin, Brandon. Mayor Brandon, I'm not sure what we're supposed to call you. He's always like, it's just Brandon. Brandon. <laughs> You'll have to use this because of our online folks. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Ron, come on. Oh. We have our vice mayor. Today. All right. I did not so, see you up there. So first of all, yeah, yeah, I, oh, good job, guys. Huh? Oh, it's okay. not on? Okay, there we go. Um, I just want to say happy birthday uh, to Bridge Church. Um, you guys have made effort, I mean, just so many things happen over the last three years, and, and it hasn't you know, gone unnoticed in the community. Uh, we appreciate each and every one of you. I mean, I know I can contact Bridge Church and have 40 volunteers just show up, like guaranteed. So uh, it's made... <laughs> It's made our lives easier. Um, it's certainly made the community's lives better. Um, and, and we appreciate each and every one of you um, in, in this church community. 
without further ado, the town council has uh, something to recognize Bridge Church on their third birthday. Whoop, whoop. On behalf of the Indian Head Town Council, in celebration of your third birthday, the town council would like to recognize your importance to the community as a whole. Congratulations and best wishes to the pastors and members of this congregation who work so faithfully and give so generously as a part of our community. Signed by myself, Vice Mayor Satula, and Councilwoman Grumbine. Thank you all. We appreciate um, just all the support and that, so th this is, you know, relationships work two ways. So there are times that the town calls us and says, hey, can you help? And, and more often than that, and y'all know because you're on the receiving end of this, Brandon gets stopped by a crazy redhead at the coffee shop and I'm like, hey, Brandon, I have this idea. We'd have to work together to make it work. What do you think? And the town and the town council, um, Ryan, the town manager, they're just so faithful to show up and say yes and partner with us and waive costs and fees and do all the things. So thank you. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. So where we've been, y'all, that's worth celebrating, right? Amen. 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 In that... We, you know, we talk about being an authentic community. Oh, let me put the table back because, oops, maybe not. Maybe. What? There I go again. Thank you. There we go. Um, so we talk about being an authentic community, and authenticity means that you celebrate what's awesome, and you also recognize what needs some work. You aren't afraid to address, identify, acknowledge, and address the gaps. We recognize that we have areas of need. As we have gone from 20 to 30 to 50 to 80, as we continue to go with this online thing and we stay right on the edge of two services, there's all these things happen. We have some areas of need that we know exist. We need an improved discipleship pathway. We, we have to improve our on and off ramps for bridge builders groups. It gets all confusing and like we're going to launch groups again in two weeks and you'll have to start registering Tuesday and you're not quite sure which groups are coming. Like we got to fix that. We have to make sure that we have the right targeted studies that work alongside of our sermon-based studies so that when we drop them into the mix, they're what you need. We're, we're in pursuit of the right parenting class. We continue to work on the couple's um, curriculum and when we're going to do sermon-based and when it's going to be the right couples thing. What are we doing for uh, singles? What are we doing? All the different areas. We have a whole area that we are just starting to dip our toe into. We know we need to deal with recovery issues. I shared with you some of the things that people have walked away from in three years, but, but we need a system. Right now we're referring out because we aren't ready to have that yet, but it's starting. God's bringing leaders, and it's beginning to happen. We know that we have to grow a little bit more so that we can get to two services so that all our volunteers and leaders have the opportunity to sit in service every week. Because right now, if you serve in Bridge Kids, you don't get to come to church. And that's really not okay. By the way, I want to say something, because every time I say grow, some of you, oh, but we love small church. Can I tell you what you actually love is community? And community works at 20 and at 200 if you stay true to your values and your principles and you walk them out and live them out. Community works at 20 and at 200. It's okay. Plus, the room doesn't get any bigger, so y'all really, okay? We know that we have needed a leader for our prayer ministry since before we began. Now, I, I, I want to say this because it's important. We have always had a prayer ministry. The church started with a Facebook group called 100 Strong Prayers for Indian Head. It was a closed group. 
because we were very honest about the prayers as we walked each street and prayed for people and, and, and everything that we poured into that. Prayer has always been a ministry here. We've had prayer walks and prayer nights and prayer events, prayer requests and prayer emails, and the prayer warriors have prayed and God has answered. What we haven't had is a structured process and a leader to lead that ministry so it's not all ad hoc. And you guys know that God called Ryan to take that on. And last week, you guys had the first meeting. Can I give a shout out for a small church? Y'all, we have 14 people show up for a prayer information meeting. 14. And one of the Bridge Builders groups we will have is Thursday, October 12th at 6.30. We begin weekly Thursday night prayer meetings, which is really exciting. Our biggest area of need is congregational care. We know that. We have an amazing care team. Actually, Summer, where are you? There. Can... She's like, I hate being the center of attention. <laughs> Summer, would you stand up, please? <laughs> Thank you. Summer coordinates meals and helps shopping, different things for families who are in the hospital or have had surgery, care packages. If you want to be a part of that, go see her after church. A year and a half ago when we had 30, 35 people, Summer came up and she said, we have this need and I'm going to take it on and I'll lead it. I was like, awesome, what every leader wants to hear, right? Pastor Rick and I, were celebrating. And that's great at 30 people, but it doesn't work at 85 people. We need more than that. We have, um, <clears throat> yeah, let me give you an idea. This week, this, this past week, we had four, family, four families with members in significant emotional crisis because of real major life complications. Four people in our congregation are currently battling cancer. One person had, I'll call it emergent because they waited till the next morning, but go to the hospital, you need surgery to clear up something that was a problem from before. We, had one, we have one team leader out with a possible torn ACL, that would be Karen. And we had one risk-induced labor and delivery. Congrats, Mike and Dee Jeffers, on grandbaby number three, Brendan Michael. We are praising God with you for a safe and happy and healthy delivery. I believe... D is with grandkids as mom and dad bring new baby home. So that's an exciting thing. But those are just the big rocks. That's just what happened in really six little days. <laughs> and that doesn't include the day-to-day, week-to-week counseling, mentoring, coaching, and care that happen, or the absence of things that ought to be happening more, like phone calls and cards and emails. And we are doing our best, but we recognize we're not doing enough. So how do we go from those individual needs to link them into the prayer team, to the physical support that's needed with rides and groceries and meals and cards, to the spiritual support, the pastoral care and counseling, getting people into the group they need or mentoring or coaching and then following up? And I got to tell you, church, there is no lack of heart. There is no lack of generosity from this family It's mostly that there's a lack of structure. There's a lack of connection points. We have to put all that together. There needs to be a ministry that connects the dots, that does the workflow, that makes it all work together. Multiple leaders who are involved and know what's going on. The first one is prayer, because most of it starts as a prayer request. And does that sound like a little overwhelming to you all? Like all those needs, you, you can be honest. Like when we sat at lead team retreat, we, we felt a little overwhelmed by this problem. Like, uh, uh, let's do exciting adventure again. This is more complicated. Like, and this is where I go, that pesky God. That pesky God who goes before us, plans for our needs before we even identify them and speak them out loud. Some of you don't know I was going to ask you to stand up. I warned her because she'll hurt me otherwise. April, Alicia, David, and Guthrie, would you stand up, please? Yeah. Y'all give them a hand. You don't know what you're giving them a hand for. All right. 
Over the last two and a half months, all four of these individuals have felt a call, answered a call, and stepped forward with a call to serve the kingdom through pastoral care and counseling and helping ministries. They are Three of them are already ministerial students. One is doing an application for that. And they will be joining Summer, who is already leading an amazing care team to create a care ministry that works hand in hand <laughs> to put all the puzzle pieces together so that we do not grow weary from doing good. Amen? So before I share just a little bit more, I want to share a message with you guys. From uh, You guys, most of you know Dwight. If you don't know Dwight, he is our church planting coach. He is founder of a 1,000 churches. He resides in Dallas, Texas, and he, well, Grapevine, I guess. Anyway, and he um, has been a vital part of this process. He has been a champion for Pastor Rick and I and continued to lift this church in prayer and support and all we do. So I'm going to turn it over to Dwight for a minute. Bridge Church, congratulations and happy birthday. Happy, happy third birthday. Man, it simply fills my heart with gratitude and joy to bring these greetings today. Over the past three years, you have grown and you've deepened your spiritual connections as a congregation and you've witnessed the power of faith and the transformative impact of coming together and building those relationships, digging in with that intentional discipleship and generously engaging with your Indian Head community. Bridge Church has become a haven of love and of support and inspiration for all who have walked through their doors. And so you need to take some time today to reflect on the journey so far and remember the, the challenges you've overcome, the blessings you've received, and the spiritual growth you've experienced together. It's a testament to the dedication and faith of each and every one of you that you stand here today stronger and more united than ever. And remember the trials, because it's through those trials that you have discovered true strength and resilience that only comes from Jesus Christ. And as you look through the window to the future, do so with unwavering faith and hope and commitment to continue to build a loving and inclusive and a compassionate community that reflects the teachings of Jesus Christ. So as we mark this special day, remember that our purpose as a church is not only to celebrate our growth or the fact that there's more people in the room today, but to extend our hands in love and support to the wider community. So keep on being a bridge. Continue to let your action and deeds continue to reflect the love of Christ as you embark on this new fourth year of the journey. So happy third anniversary. May our faith continue to guide us, our love continue to unite us, and our service continue to make a positive impact on the world around us. Congratulations, Brid Church. I don't know if he's watching right now, but I know he'll watch later. later. So everybody say, thanks, Dwight. Thanks, thanks Dwight. Dwight. I have taken more time to unpack where we've been and where we are because there's a shift in where we're going. Not geographically. We are right here. We're not going anywhere. Brandon's eyes just got about this wide. It was kind of funny. No. Um, but because God gave us this mission to connect with our community where they were at. And if we're honest, like, I, I, I don't ever take God's word lightly, but I don't hesitate to say I think God is pleased with the, our faithfulness to fulfilling that mission. We have been on point and pouring it all in, but that won't get us where we need to go, right? In the first three years, we had this very targeted approach of reaching the people of Indian Head with Jesus and the message that they're seeing known and loved by God. Matter of fact, can we put up that... Slide. Wow. Okay. So you can see, I think we must have turned some other mics on, or they just want me to not look at the screen. That's okay, too. Not a problem. Um, but everything we've done has been pointing outward. Almost everything we've done has pointed outward. 
And if we look at those needs of discipleship, of a prayer team, of a care ministry that supports everything, it's got to be more. We have to take this mission that we have been so focused on that's focused outside of our walls. And while our values, those six values, they reflect what we do on the inside for personal growth. That's not painted into our vision. And it's important that it is. Um, yeah. Nope, I'm going to wait just another minute to give that to you guys. Everybody inhale. Exhale. That was totally for me and not you at all. So... <laughs> Now that we've gone from, and I can't tell you how many times I've heard it, and never from him, and absolutely never um, from Ron either, but how many times I heard, who needs another church in Indian Head? So we're so happy you guys are here. How can we work with you across our community? Then we have to take the next steps. And what's next for us is targeting going from that targeted message outside the church to bringing people and our own church family closer to Jesus. So are we, okay, we're safe now. Can you put up the slide with two arrows? Because I'm not going to even look at that. We have done the top one for three years. And now it's time to bring all of us back to Jesus Colossians 1, 28 and 29 says, He, being Jesus, is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature to Christ. To this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. See, we got to come back across the bridge. And we got to dig deeper internally. An intentional relationship with God and others that moves us along an intentional path from isolation and spiritual infancy to fellowship in Christian community and spiritual maturity. That's where we're going, y'all. Um, I'm going to have you guys. Yeah, That's two ums in one minute, so it's time for me to hand these out. Alicia and Caleb, can you help me out? Can you guys put the new mission statement up, please? Oh, here, let me give you the bigger pile. That makes sense. It's math. There you go. So we had our mission statement that pointed a lot out. And our vision for the next five years. I know they're handing me all things, but can you read this with me? A growing community of everyday people partnering with God to ensure each person we encounter believes they are seen, known, and loved by God and by us. A growing community. That means we are growing not just in numbers, but in our own faith and spiritual maturity. Partnering with God. That means we are continuing to hold true to those values of God's word and the Holy Spirit's presence and freedom and equality in Christ. Christ being our number one place where we get all of our identity to continue to live out the mission that we've been living out all along. I know it's a little distracting with the cards, you guys. I'm sorry, but we wanted you to have them. And all of that is built on, who knew Bridge was an acronym? Raise your hand. Building relationships, intentional discipleship, generous engagement. That's how we accomplish what we're set to do. I want to say this. Mm. Yeah. God's been telling me for like a minute to put my notes away and just talk, and I have been resistant, so I'm going to set my glasses down and not be able to see anything. (laughs) Guys, I am so excited with where we have been, and I'm so excited with what God has done. And I recognize that there are needs, and I recognize that in those needs, a lot of them reside inside the church family and inside the house. You got a mission statement, but you also got invitation cards. It says, our little four-by-fours. 
we have to grow or we won't be able to meet the needs inside and outside of the church. The four people, actually all five people I had stand up. Care team, stand up again. Care team and care ministry people, all you care people that are going to become something amazing. (laughs) None of these five people were part of our original launch team. You guys can sit down again. If we hadn't been willing to grow, if we hadn't been willing to invite, if we hadn't been willing to share and ask people to come in, where would we be? With the people who had cancer that needed help and meals, where would we be with the people who needed hospital visits? Where would we be with the people who needed prayers, with, with the restoration ministries that are going to take place? God is doing a new thing, and it's exciting, and it's awesome. And there's a whole thing. Okay, flip the card over. Everybody's looking at the cards. Flip the card over. There's a process. It's not a pipe dream. It's not a pretty flower in the sky. That doesn't even make sense. Cloud rainbow in the sky. It's not just a pretty rainbow in the sky. There's a process to get here. Welcome to the next four weeks of sermon series. We're going to walk through our pillars. We're going to walk through how it's going to happen. But God paved the way. I think that's what I need you to hear. God paved the way in all of it. God painted a picture from the very beginning of a desert that became streams and flourishing growth of a land that was desolate and dead that was being brought back to life. That's vision. But if we're real, three years ago, Velocity Center wasn't open yet. The, the other building, USBTA, wasn't even, it was still a deserted, like God is doing the thing in all the places. Gas station is getting renovated. The boardwalk opened up. The schools, uh, the Judy Center, the community school, all these things are happening. But none of those things are the true answer. Jesus is the true answer. And the church is here to walk that out. And I think if I could share anything with you, God so loves each of you. God sees you and he knows you and he loves you. And I can look across this room and know where God has ministered in each one of your lives and brought transformation and hope, is walking you through healing journeys, is restoring families and marriages and ministering to those that are in crisis. And God is inviting us to commit to that and commit to bringing people into that, from those safe spaces into the community, back into where they find the truest answer and the greatest freedom. And that's the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, where every person finds freedom, equality, and eternal life if they just say yes. We have been so blessed to be a church that gets to be so present out there, and that will not stop. The time has come for us who are mature to keep maturing and for us to invite new people alongside to walk the walk of spiritual maturity with us so that they can find the same freedom and healing. They can find the 10 and 12 years of sobriety. They can find the healed marriages. They can find the children restored back to themselves. They can find the freedom from addictions. They can find the financial freedom. They can find all those things that come from saying yes to Jesus and picking this up and learning what it says and living what it says. And that's what God has invited us to do and to share with others. How y'all feel about that? (laughs) 
There's a passage in Isaiah. There are several. But this is the one that, um, one of the two that we focused on at staff retreat, and it paints this picture. And I want to invite you to see this picture. It's Isaiah 44. It says, this is what the Lord says. He who made you, who formed you in the womb, and who will help you. Don't be afraid, you who I have chosen. For I will pour out water on this thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will put my spirit on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. They will spring up like grass in a meadow, like poplar trees by flowering streams. Some will say, I belong to the Lord, and others will call themselves by the name of Jacob, and so others will write on their hand the Lord's and will take the name of Israel. This community has only begun to see the work that God is doing in it. And I am so excited that we get to be a part of it because he is bringing it to completion. Pastor Rick, would you come up here with me? Can I just offer, because I'm standing back there and I'm listening and I'm watching you guys and God put this on my heart because we've been talking, Pastor Jen's been talking about we we, right? He's, she's been having people stand up because they're stepping into ministry. We're doing this. We've done all these things. We've had these partnerships. We're making friends. But then I was reading in Isaiah, the, the passage, and it says, God says, God. I have chosen you. And we've been using we's a lot today. But he has chosen you. And I, there's too many people in here for me to say name, individual names. Just know that he has chosen you. He believes in you. He loves you more than anything. And so we've been clapping about we's. But can we just, can we stand up and lift our voices and our claps up to the one who believes in you? believes in me and chooses me and us. Can we just praise God? (laughs) It's funny because I was sitting up here struggling because the whole last part of my word, like I was like, nope. And I was like, but, but. The sermon needs a closing, and it's because you had the final word. Mm. I love that. I had the final word. You had the final word. I had the final word today. (laughs) Stop the presses, mark the books. So we're going to pray. What what I think we want to say is we want to invite you to hear more about the journey and the mission forward. We're excited to jump in and explain it. That's not for today. That's for the next four weeks. If you are joining us for the first time, we are usually a scripture by scripture, verse by verse. We go through the Bible and devour it kind of church. And so we thank you for being part of our reflection, our celebration, our acknowledgement of where there are gaps and our challenge that God has for us to accept where he would take us. And so with that, yeah, would you? Yeah, we're going to pray. And, some, and most times we're quiet when we're praying, but I'm going to invite you guys to participate in prayer. Yeah. So let's go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you that you have chosen each of us, Lord. Thank you that you love us so much. You sent your son. You came down here to earth. You took the form of man. And you sacrificed yourself for us. So we so thank you for that, Lord. And we know that you're not finished with us. You brought us here. That's right. You put this place on our heart. You brought us new friends and new relationships and new partnerships, but you're not done. That's right. And so, Lord, today we turn this all over to you. We give this to you. So would you take us from here to where you want us to go next? That's right. Lord, we need your strength. We need you to equip us. Because some of us think, maybe I can't do that. Hmm. But only you. So, Holy Spirit, fill us. Overflow from us, Lord. Take us. Have your way. Have your will. 
And we pray this in your name. Amen. Amen.